And now it's time for part two of the Tina Turner method of learning angular momentum. Part one was the easy part. Discs rotating about their center of mass, ice skaters pulling their arms in, etc. And that might be all you need. But if you want the more mathematically adventuresome version, we're going to do the rough version now. So stick around for this part. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is, uh, we're going to do an angularly momentous thought experiment. Okay, so here we go. The board is a frictionless table, and on this frictionless table is a bar of mass m, and approaching this bar of mass m is a disk with velocity v. And in this problem, we'll imagine a coordinate system with, with its origin at the center of the bar. Okay? They're just sitting there. Well, the bar is just sitting there. The disk is moving along. And then they hit, and they have an elastic collision. So after the collision, let's at first just use our intuition to think about what's going to happen. Elastic collision, they're not going to stick together. The mass of the disk will certainly slow down. And this will get pushed forward, but also it's receiving an impulsive force that actually has a torque because it's off, you know, it's a distance from its uh, rotation axis. A free object will rotate around its center of mass. So it's going to get pushed forward and it's going to rotate. So it's going to look something like this. This got pushed forward like that. It's now going around an omega. That's not the omega vector. That's just to give you a sense of how it's going around. And it's going forward at some, we'll call it V, center of mass. The disk uh, will be behind it because it didn't pass it. It hit it, and it slowed down a little bit. The disk will be here, and it's now going, instead of at V initial, it's now going at V final. Slowed down a little bit. And they have the same mass. That'll make the problem easier. Before we start it, let's ask ourselves um, a couple of questions here. Will we conserve uh, translational momentum? Sure. Surely it's not that hard, right? So we had some initial momentum. The answer is sure. Uh, we had initial mass going at velocity initial. And in the final, we have the mass going at velocity final. Plus, that same amount of mass is the bar moving, and it's moving at the center of mass velocity, some other velocity, m, v, center of mass. No problem. But can we conserve uh, angular momentum? Uh, this is the part that looks a little strange if you've only thought about rotating disks. Because clearly, we have some angular momentum here. If the bar is rotating at omega, we could say L equals I omega. There is angular momentum on this side. But where was the angular momentum here? The bar wasn't rotating. The mass was just translating. So it appears that we've created angular momentum because it's an isolated system. But of course, we can't. We have to conserve angular momentum. So this whole little run of several lectures is explaining uh, what's going on here. And then we will eventually solve this entire problem and get B final omega and V center of mass. 